Well, how about for this top face? What would be the electric flux through this top face if we're in the presence of a uniform horizontal electric field? What would the flux be for the top face of the cube? Um. The flux here, yeah. What can we say about the flux through this top face? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's right. Again, you didn't sound too confident, but that's exactly right. Um, remember that we only want to take the component of the electric field that is perpendicular to the surface. Or equivalently, we only want the component of the electric field that is parallel to A. But what is the component of E that is parallel to A? Does this have a component that's parallel to A? No. So what would a mathematician say is the component that's parallel to A? The math a mathematician can't just use the word no, they have to put in a number here. To Zero. Show. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Okay, so you seem a little uncomfortable with that. Yeah. But when a, when a component doesn't exist, a, math a mathematician would say, well, the component is zero. Yeah. And then if you plug in the number zero over here, you would get a flux of zero. Okay, so a mathematician isn't just content to just say, oh, that component doesn't exist. In order to use the formula, they might say, oh, the component exists, but it's zero, so to yeah. speak. And then they can plug in the number zero here. So what component of E is perpendicular to the surface? Well, zero. Or what component of E is parallel to the surface? Well, zero. So either way, we would get a flux of zero. Or we could just use our common sense. How much electric field is exiting or entering the surface here? Well, nothing. It's just skimming along the surface, but it's not exiting or entering the surface. Um, so here are the flux. The flux through this face would be zero. So you can see that the flux through different faces of a surface can be different numbers. I think we can work that out based on common sense, but how about using our cosine of theta approach? When you're ready, what is theta for this top face? What is the angle between A and E? 90 degrees. Yeah, they're perpendicular to each other. Um, so A, theta would be 90. Well, do you know what the cosine of 90 is? Yeah, so that would also confirm that there's zero flux here. Although, like I said, I would only use that as a backup. I think it's just more easier to just use our common sense. Only the component of the field that's perpendicular to the surface creates flux, and this doesn't have a component that's perpendicular to the surface, so there is no flux. Mm -hmm. This was a case where all the electric field vectors were either parallel or perpendicular to each surface. We didn't have any cases where the theta was like 20 degrees or 30 degrees. You might see one or two problems in the homework where theta is like 20 or 30 degrees, but you're very unlikely to see that on the exam. That's a little too hard for an introductory course like this. Yeah. So we're just going to focus on the cases where E is either parallel or perpendicular to each surface. Uh, by the way, one more thing. Notice that in this case, I didn't tell you what the source of these electric field lines was. Uh, and that oftentimes will happen. Uh, we know that there must be some source charges that are creating this electric field, but very often in physics we don't care about what the source charges are, we just care about the electric field itself. So we don't need, once I tell you what the electric field is like, you don't need to know what the source charges are in order to figure out the flux. Okay. In this case, the, the source must be somewhere that's outside of uh, this cube in order to create a, a uniform horizontal field like this. What would be the total flux here? Again, let's say we're in a uniform horizontal electric field. What would be the total flux here if we added up the flux across all six of these faces? Um, I guess zero, because That's right. there's the same amount of yeah. First of all, there's only two faces that have any flux at all. Only the left-hand face and the right-hand face have any flux at all. Um, the top face, the front face, the bottom face, and the rear face, they don't have any flux because for those, the electric field is always going to be parallel to the surface. Yeah. So only the left and the right faces have any electric field that's entering or exiting. 
But remember that I said this is a uniform electric field, which means that the amount of electric field that is entering the left-hand face must be equal to the amount of electric field that's exiting this face. So the total amount of flux for the entire surface here would be zero, which is what we would expect because there's no enclosed charge. Remember that we saw earlier that the total electric flux through a closed surface depends on the enclosed charge, and if there's no enclosed charge, then there's no total electric flux. Mm -hmm. There can be flux through one of the surfaces, but it can, has to be canceled by a flux through a different surface if there's no charge enclosed. Well, now I think we're ready to, to state Gauss's law, which is the main theme of this chapter. So we, now we've gotten the concept that tells us how to measure the amount of electric field that's escaping through a surface. The, the flux here tells us how much field is escaping through the surface, or how many electric field lines are escaping through the surface, or the net amount of electric field lines. Here, the net amount of electric field lines escaping was zero, because any field line that entered was canceled by one that was exiting over here. Well, we saw earlier that the amount of, uh, so should the flux If you increase the enclosed charge, what should happen to the flux of the surface that's enclosing it? Should it increase or decrease? Um, should increase? Right. So should I put Q on a numerator or a denominator here? It's a numerator. That's right. And it turns out that the amount of flux is proportional to the charge. So we need a constant of proportionality. And the constant of proportionality that we use in this chapter is called epsilon sub zero. This is called the permittivity constant. So this is just a new constant, the permittivity constant, epsilon sub zero. Can I ask hypothetically, so Q enclosed just means that, like you were showing before, that if the charge went from being plus one to plus two, that would mean there'd be two times the amount of electric field lines leaving the enclosed space? Yeah. Or that's right. Okay. We almost kind of already proved this yeah. with our previous examples. Yeah. We showed that, let's say you have a positive one Coulomb charge that's enclosed, where well, you might decide to draw four electric field lines extending from that. Well, then if you double the amount of enclosed charge, we said that you should then double the number of field lines. So it would go from four to eight. Well, that's just what this is saying. Um, that would double the amount of flux. Because remember, the flux is basically a measure of how much electric field is escaping, how many electric field lines. So we've already, um, in a sense, kind of proven this idea that um, we, we've seen that if you uh, double the enclosed charge, you're going to double the amount of electric field lines that you're going to draw. So it stands to reason there will be twice as much uh, electric field lines escaping, which is what the flux represents. And then this is just a constant of proportionality. We haven't obviously done a full mathematical proof of this, but we've done all that we need. There's a bunch of, uh, uh, when they talk about Gauss's law in the book, they have a bunch of different pictures to try to prove that um, all that matters for the flux is the amount of enclosed charge. We've gone through a few of those pictures. I think enough to get the basic intuition. There's some more pictures in the book that give you other cases, like when you have, say, two charges or three charges. And it turns out, no matter how many charges you have, the amount of flux escaping from a surface, the net amount of flux, just depends on the enclosed charge. So if there's zero enclosed charge, what would the flux be? Yeah, the total flux then would be zero, like in that previous example of the cube. That doesn't mean there can't be any flux, but the flux on one face would have to be canceled by the flux on another face, so the total flux would be zero. And what's E naught again? This is just a constant. Okay. It's like um, the constant. Remember that last week we saw, we learned about this formula. We just said this was just a constant of proportionality, Coulomb's constant. Well, here's just a new constant of proportionality. I guess we might as well figure out what the units are for flux. We should be able to use this definition to figure out the units for flux. So what would those units be? Um, J less B. I guess newtons times meters uh, squared per coulomb. Good. What's the units for electric field? Newtons per coulomb. 
And what are the units for A? Square meters. Mm -hmm. And by the way, trig functions don't have units. So these are our units. So there's no special name for the units for flux, but we could figure out those units if we needed to. 